Bonjour, hello, welcome to another edition of How To with this old French house slash bungalow. I'm building a house, but it's not, it's actually a bungalow and I do lots of videos if you're new to the channel about the progress and the journey of doing this. Um, and I also do like to do her how to video. So this is going to be a video on how to do a drop ceiling, a ceiling shelf. <coughs> Five glass in the air again. You have to excuse me, if you watch my other video, you know it's a constant problem. <coughs> so yeah, ceiling shelf, LED, upright ceiling. Um, there's a few different names. If you Google it, not much really comes up. You see it in high-end houses, you see it in Indian restaurants, it's a popular place to see it. Um, I've already built one. So if you're new to the channel, this is what I've just built. So this is the uh, dropped ceiling. So basically there'll be an LED ring going the whole way around, uplighting that part of the ceiling, and then there'll be down lighters spread around there. It's just a really nice feature. I personally really like it. So I thought I would do a different one in each room. So to start off with, um, you select a height. My height is 254 centimetres. That's to allow for the flooring, that's to allow when it's all in place, all plaster, plaster boarded, um, the 2.5 meter lengths of wood that we're building the water barrel of will fit in there snugly with no issues. We've allowed a couple of mil tolerance. So it's a how-to video. I will stop waffling and now it is about how-to. Right, ideally you want a laser. If you haven't got a laser, just mark it and then use your six foot level. I happen to have a laser because apparently I'm a professional. So what I've done is I've gone around and marked where the laser beam is. I will now take that down and I'm going to put a track the whole way around. Now this video is about how to make a ceiling out of metal stud partitioning um, because that's quite accessible for most people. There's going to be no fancy stuff apart from metal stud partitioning which will be the, the track and the stud or if you're in France the rail and the montalps if that's the correct pronunciation it's my French is shit um, and some screws and some wood. Right, let's get going. Right, let's do this. Right, so what I'm doing first is this is what we will call track. This is what you normally put on the floors in the ceiling, sole plate, top track, bottom track. We're going to put in one on each side and then obviously because it's not long enough, we're at the extra bit. So we will first of all do that. I will be using 25 mil metal screws which will pierce through the metal, through the platform into the metal again, giving it a good secure fixing. So let's do that first. those two tracks into position. Now what I'm going to do before I do the two final bits on the end is I'm just going to put one piece of stud that's going to span this whole width. So I'll do that now and then the two bits of track either side will go up afterwards. That just makes sure everything lines up and ties in nicely. so you can see what's happened so there you go I will now replicate that on the other side so we we'll come back when that's done that's that piece in right now the next thing to decide on is how wide do you want your ceiling shelf to be now in my other video I discussed this and basically I went for 600 uh, it's a good depth or width whatever you want to call it but also Boards are 1.2 meters, so half of a board, 600. So 
One board does two sections. It's a good use of materials rather than having lock cuts and weights, and it works. Um, I also decided on a 200 mil deep um, shelf, um, eight inches if you're American. Um, so that would be the depth of it. So translated, what that means is we need to build out a wall at 600 and also at 400 off of this perimeter stud that I've put up. So I will get on with that and come back because it's easier to see it rather than talk about it. Okay, I've now set out that first section. So the one set at 400, effectively, that's the back of the shelf. The studs have been strategically placed at 600 centers. So also when this one comes on at 600, it sits in the middle. So that's been done on purpose. This front track here, now it's entirely up to you how deep you have the shelf. Because um, basically what you now do is build a mini wall on top of that. So if you want 100 mil, obviously you cut the studs just on 100 mil. If you want them 200, so on and so forth. So in the other room I did it 100 mil. Because I want every room to be a little bit different, I'm going to go a little bit thicker. So I'm going to do it at 150 mil. Um, we've also replicated it on the other side. So what we'll do now is what we've done there now needs to be done there. It's pretty much just chasing your tail. So once you've done one section, you just copy it the whole way around. And then that's basically the framework set out. So we'll just get that sorted now. Now on this longer length, um, it's just over three meters, which is really annoying. So I've had to add a little bit on 60 mil, a little bit of the track. But to connect it to what we've got up here, you just use a little bit of the stud, the track slides over the top of it. Everything's gonna be really flexible for now until it gets tied into the ceiling and back into the wall. Don't worry about that, just keep an eye on your measurements and check it as you go. But basically that's that in position and the next thing to do is put studs in between it. So I will do that now and then it'll be replicated behind me as well. Just cut some studs ready. Right, I'll just get them all marked up and fixed into place. Right, that's the other side now done. Right, I know this is a quite confusing video because just the nature of the job's confusing. Um, if you're like me when you're watching videos, you keep on pressing stop, forward, backwards and try and understand what the person you're trying to tell you is on about. Right, quick recap. So, you put track either side, you put stud either side around the whole perimeter, done. Then, depending on how deep you want your shelf, so like I said, it's 600 with a 200 overhang, so that's at 400. So at 400, you build a wall. You do one there and one over there, easy peasy. Then on this side and that side, you build the equivalent of another stud wall. It is effectively bottom track, top track studs. So then you connect it, easy. That's that done. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is build the upstand on this side and that side, which is the same as that. So measuring in 200 from the front or 400 from the back. We'll build a wall the whole way along on both sides. And then that's everything exactly where it should be ready to move on to the next stage. I really hope that makes sense. Okay, as you can see, that is all now framed out. So the next thing to do for me will be to plasterboard the whole way around. Now, technically, if you only wanted a 50 mil deep shelf, it's there. You can just plasterboard, return it back. It's done. It'd be as easy as that. And then you'd have quite a thin looking shelf, which does actually look quite good. Um, like I said, I want thicker, so I will be going thicker. So to do that, I need to plasterboard that back section first, so then I can screw my rail, my track, sorry, um, to the back wall. So I'm going to start plasterboarding now.
pay. As you can see, that is now all plasterboarded around the back there. The next stage will be put another bit of metal the whole way around it and the required height to get the depth of the shelf. So we will do that. Okay, I finished the plasterboarding. And then, if you remember at the very beginning of the job, we put a perimeter around. Well, that's been done again on this internal wall at the height that I want it to be for the depth of the shelf. So from the bottom of there to the top of there, 150 mil. So that's been put the whole way around. So you can see that. Also, what I've done is I've put another track on top of this outside lip to build that ledge up. And the reason we do that is so we can build this. So there you can see, so now, the distance from there to there is plenty wide enough, a lot deeper than the 50 mil and more so than I wanted. So that is brilliant. Um, so the next job now for me is to replicate this on that side, same there, same there. As you can see, it's literally just a series of building little walls on top of the little walls that you built as such but the walls are sometimes that way rather than that way. <laughs> right, um, once that's done, it'll be ready to pass the board, that and that. Now, with this ceiling, if we were just going to do a traditional uh, ceiling shelf the whole way around the room, that would be it then. We'd uh, just pass the board, that, the whole way around, job done. But with this, I'm doing an extra little detail, which is I'm going to put another shelf in the middle as well. Um, so a little bit of extra work involved, but it's no different to what's been done. It just means literally I will span across from there and then create the shelves identical to what I've been doing around the perimeter. So we'll come back once all this metal work's done and we're ready for plasterboarding. Right, I've now framed out both sides. What I've also done is I've put the plasterboard on top as well. Um, I did say it in a previous video, but obviously if you're watching this as a fresh viewer, it will make no sense. So basically, when you tie metal together like this, there's quite a lot of flex in it. So basically, a lot of the time it'll be flopping one way or the other. So by screwing that on, leveling that up and screwing it down, that keeps that nice and plumb. So it's really important that once you've built this frame up, that when you do put the plasterboard on, you make sure it's nice and plumb because otherwise it can kick out either way. Right, the next thing I'm gonna be doing is purely because that's a track along there, which means basically we're gonna be creating another little wall along there. The easiest thing to do is plasterboard these sides that way I can put a little bit of stud on that side, a little bit of stud on that side, fix it to it, that ties it all in nice, and then we can frame that out. So I will do that now. Okay, so now both sides have been metal, so it is just as simple as plasterboarding now, so let's get that done.
Okay, that is effectively the shelf. Now all done. Those that are paying attention, I did say earlier on I was going to do 150 mil, but when I offered it up and checked it, it still wasn't quite as deep as what I was uh, looking for, so I extended it to 200. So the depth of this is 200. I think long term, um, potentially, I think I'm going to pad it with some nice veneer, some oak or something to really set it off. Um, right, because this is a how to video, basically, we've nearly done that part of what we're building obviously the next job will be to get electrics ran all in then we can plasterboard the whole way around so we'll come back when I'm doing that but because I'm going to be doing this little section up here I'm going to do that now but I won't film it because obviously this video is about how to do this but this is an extra so I'll come back once I build it just to show you guys so you can see what I've actually done. And then um, the next video clip after that will be a splash of boarding with all the electric cables in place. Right, that's that centre detail done now. Okay, so continuing on with this uh, ceiling shelf uh, build, um, I've come in everything's been beaded so I've put metal plaster bead around the perimeters of the front of the shelf um, on this bay I've done the first coat of plaster so that's done I'm just about to uh, put this coat on so let's go high speed and get this room all plastered Alrighty, that's that ceiling and that outstand done. Right, I am all set up. I'm going to be doing the lower ceiling shelf the whole way around. Um, I'm just going to do a before and after because um, I haven't got time doing this on your own. It's never fun because obviously it's always a bit rushed. So uh, this is a before. <laughs> Okay, right, so everything's now ready to install the LED lights on this drop ceiling design that I've done in this room. Um, I'm going to be going with Govi um, after a bit of research. They seem to be quite a good budget form of LEDs, uh, good reviews. I checked out loads and loads of different ones, buy them from eBay, Amazon. Um, I've already been installing them on some of the other t um, ceilings, work perfectly fine. Um, really happy with my choice so I'm not too bothered. Right, so when we did this initial design, obviously for me it was a bit of a learning curve. There's a few videos, you know, on the best way to do these lights and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to climb up and explain. So if you're doing this for yourself, you know, you can learn from my mistake as such. So this upstand goes up and then returns flat. Now, if we were to put the wood on the face of it like I was originally going to, I would have created a 20 mil lip. Now, I've done that on the other ceiling, which I'll show you later on in this video. But on this one, I did it, so it just goes flat. Now, what that means is really you want your LED light facing that way. You don't want it facing this way, you want it to face that way. It creates a better glow. Like, I, I already tested it, like, that is 100% right. So, because I don't have this bit to attach to, what I've done is this. So, I've just run some batten the whole way around. Now, from down there, from any angle, you cannot see it. So, it's fine. It gives me the ability to now run my LED light the whole way around with something to stick to nice and securely. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unreel it now and uh, we'll get it all wired up. Okay, so these are um, 
five meter ones. So you get the LED strip with your control. That's your infrared for your switch. That's your controller, power. And then you get some extra actual mechanical fixings if your sticky back tape gives up the ghost. Okay, so with this drop design, what we're doing is we're putting the power up in the attic. Now, obviously, we know there's the chance of these, like any lighting system, to fail at some point in the future. So rather than hardwiring it or mess around, we're basically feeding this up. Up by one of the junction boxes, we're gonna have a proper plug up there. It can just be plugged in. So then in the future, when this breaks or gives up the ghost, it will just be a case of feeding the new wire down, plugging it in and sorting it out nice and easy. Why make it difficult? Um, so now literally all I'm gonna do is go up there, start in that corner, wind it the whole way around, sticking it in place, and that will be happy days. Now I know this is a little bit short, I am denied about it, and all it means is there'll be a, a slight um, you know, patch where it's a little bit darker, but I'm not personally that bothered rather than wasting the extra money on buying a 10 meter one for the sake of a little bit. I'm gonna put it that way, so when you're in bed looking, you will see the full glow anyway, so it'd just be a slight dark spot there. Um, it's just me, that's my choice. Right, let's get it fitted. Okay, that's that unreeled. And then what I do is I literally just undo a little bit of the tape at a time and then press it firmly against whatever you're sticking it to. Okie dokie, right, I was just having a thought then, as I was unreeling it, obviously I've done a lot of research, I think one of the other ones I'm going to be fitting is going to be a lot shorter, so there's going to be some left over, and you can get connectors um, to connect up one to another, so that is what will happen, is the leftover bits from one of the other ones, I will connect it, and then that way I will have a continuous light the whole way around, so... There you go, it pays to think. Right, I'll get this other one installed and then we will fire the lights up. But you won't know this because it'd just be the next video clip, but there's no power. We've currently got a power outage. So anyway, I'll get the other side fitted and then we'll get it fired up in the next clip. Okay, following on from that last video clip, a fair bit of times elapsed, just that's irrelevant. Um, basically what I did is we got the electrician in Everything got wired up. Um, the two sockets that run these two individual light bays are now up in the attic where they can be plugged in and they operate off of this switch here. Um, so without further ado, what I will do <laughs> is turn the light socket here. Come into this room here. Turn the lights off and then turn the feature lights on. Voila, there you go. So we've currently got it on cool blue, which gives a lovely light. I've still not got the block connectors to finish off the bit along there, but as you can see, from there to there, hasn't got the LED strips. There's the bit of strip left ready to do it, but I haven't got the connectors. But if you can compare it to where it is lit up, there's not that much difference. Like obviously, yes, there is a more of a glow, but it's not terrible. Um, really, really pleased with the end results. Um, right. This wasn't the only room that got um, ceilings done. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll fire everything up and I'll walk you through to show you what else has been done. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just walk you through into the various rooms. We've got it all set on like light, light colours, um, just for like the mood setting. Um, this is my feature TV wall. Um, it was my own custom design that I've copied off of pictures that I've seen off the internet. So really, really pleased with that. I've seen this L shape design when I was glancing around as well and thought it looked absolutely awesome. So I've replicated, this is a thinner profile one, whereas that's a fair bit chunkier. And then this room here, the master bedroom. As you can see with this one, we've done an oak trim around it. Really, really pleased with this one. And like you say it's just a really non-obtrusive light so you can imagine if you're in bed with your partner just relaxing reading books or just watching a bit of tv it's just a nice light to have in the room and then this is the baby's room so just gives a same again just this really really nice light as you can see, I've just positioned the sensor so you can just about see it if you're over in this corner here. So if she does want to play with it, obviously pressing the buttons on the controller is a lot easier than using a phone app. So yeah, that's all the ceiling's done. Um, yeah, really, really pleased with it. It went brilliantly. Um, if you've enjoyed this, if you've enjoyed watching um, you know, this video, um, this is my main channel, Craig Travel Monkey Perry, but I've also got a, another channel called This Old French House, This Old French House in the series. So I would say I'll put it in the description, but I'm crap at that sort of thing. So if you Google This Old French House in the series, I'm like at the top of the search bar on Google. So basically, um, I live in France, I've built my own property here, I've built a massive bungalow, which is where we are now. And um, basically, from the very beginning of where we first got the house and knocking it down to rebuilding it, it's all been documented. I've literally filmed the whole lot. Um, so if you've enjoyed seeing this video and you want to see you know, how the rest of this stuff got built, then it's all on my uh, other channel. So yeah, um, go check it out. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe because apparently that's what us YouTubers say. And uh, yeah, see you on the next video. Ciao.